Oh, hey, welcome to Flameless Fireside. We have a great show for you guys today. Today we are going to be interviewing David Danes, and we're going to be talking about how to survive dating with children. I know that a lot of you guys are single parents. A lot of you guys have uh, challenges, and uh, I myself am father of three, so I get how that is. So we've got David Danes coming on. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and start bringing people in. So there will be one second while I do this. Hey, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. There you go. Yay. Ah. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey, Whitney. How are you? Great. David, uh, you are... Where you where you uh, calling from? Um, I'm in Ogden, Utah. Ogden, Ogden Utah. That's my hometown. Oh, nice. <laughs> grew up there. I love Ogden. Then you, uh, yeah, I grew up in Plain City, which is just west of Ogden. Yep. Okay, so you you're born and born and raised in Utah. So I was born in Nebraska. Um, oh. My dad was going to dental school there, so we're Husker fans. Go Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we moved to Utah two weeks later. So I was raised in Utah. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Nice. And uh, you, you've you got how many kids? It looks like you have one. One. Yep, one. Just one. One girl? Yep, yep. Emma is 10. Yeah, she'll be 11 in March. Mm. Exciting. Kind of crazy. Yeah, my kids actually uh, got a birthday in March as well. I have a 10-year-old Emma as well. Well, that's awesome. We have a lot of similarities. I have a 10-year-old <laughs> cool. Ellie, not Emma. <laughs> Whitney, my 10-year-old is Emma. And my twins are Emma and Ellie. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. Cool. What are they on? That's funny. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it is. <Yeah>. Kind of freaky. <laughs> <laughs> no, when we, were, when we were trying to name her, like we could not come up with a name. And just one day, like it just popped in my head. And I told my wife and like my eyes just lit up. Like that's her name. Like it was Aww. just. <laughs> the good yeah. one. It is. That's cool. Uh, did So you guys didn't really have like any, any big fights when it came to naming names, huh? No, I wanted to name her. Oh, what was it? Um, Iniqua. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that no, was my ex. Like, like every name he picked was like super out there, weird. And I was like, uh, like we just have little white kids. The, like yeah. these are little white kid names. <laughs> like like harmony. <laughs> no, no like, they were all the weird so names. Weird. I don't even remember what they were. Yeah, the weird names I don't get. I'm like rock, stone, like no. <laughs> like there was this one kid, his name was Savage. I'm like, who does that oh. to their children? Savage? Yeah. <laughs> that that's an awesome like football name, but if you never right. go into football and you're like this music major. <laughs> Like, who's he? Oh, he's savage. Yeah, like maybe <laughs> as a nickname, not as like a birth name. <laughs> I, I know someone that almost named their son um, Judas. And I was oh, like, no. okay, of all the names not to name your child. Please it's don't. Jesus. Yeah, right? Like, I know, but I really don't believe in the Bible. But I'm like, but. That's where you got the name. And there's going to yeah. be a lot of people wondering why you named your kid Judas. A lot of people do believe in the Bible and it's going to have a negative connotation. I was like, oh. so yeah. Mm. People That's are funny. Yeah. <laughs> she changed her mind. She went with McCoy. Much better. That's cute. That's better. <laughs> yeah, that's totally the real McCoy right there. I the love it. McCoy. Yeah. yeah. Michael and naming my kids was that the names would like fit for little kids, even if it was like maybe, cause my Ellie, Ellie is actually Eliana. Is actually <gasps> oh my gosh, oh. it's Eliana too. Mine is Eliana. Shut your face. I am so serious. <laughs> Love it. So serious. That's How do you spell so it? E-L-I-N-A. Oh my gosh, shush. That is so awesome. <laughs> Damn, what are the odds of that? You 10 year old Eliana's, uh, oh. that's awesome. Okay. So my goal was always that like they could have like cute little kid names, but that they also had like good adult names, like when they need to get a real job and like turn in a resume or be a doctor or be an apostle or whatever it is. So right. that was my plan is let's not give them weird names that are going to make it hard to get a job. Yeah, no joke, right? I'm just right. thinking like, like, you know, the older generation, like you have Phyllis, you have 
Edith. I'm like, can you imagine calling your baby that? Yeah, like, no. With a serious face. <laughs> yeah. No, my grandma's name was Venla. And I just try to imagine like a little baby. Hi, Venla. And I'm like, mm. mine was <laughs> Irma Gertrude. That was my grandma's name. Oh, dear. Yeah. Okay, so, old country right there. <laughs> so this is a true story my so my mom was living up in idaho and her so the dad's name was harry head and his his daughter's name was anita head <laughs> oh wow that's rough that's rough <laughs> that is yeah. so no <laughs> don't we all need a hit sometimes that's like the kind of things that people like sign up like with a fake name and then everybody's like says it a few times they're like oh okay yeah that's a joke oh that's the thing is they were totally serious about it they didn't that's think it. it was like they didn't get the joke and everybody, well, everybody could hear it and they're like really oh, wow. so <laughs> nobody not actually said this. hey do you understand what that sounds like like nobody like kind of interceded i don't know I kind of feel like maybe like a nurse or somebody in the hospital should have been like, just like, <laughs> FYI, are, like you, are you sure time. you want to do this? Think about it. <laughs> when, when was this? What time frame? Oh, this was years ago. Oh, are we talking about like you were a kid when this happened? Like no, day. this was when my mom was a kid. Okay. All right. So, so phrasing and okay. terminology changes over the years, right? Right. Okay. I, I know a guy whose uh, uncle's name was Dick Oral Bush. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, if that's not being born under a bad sign, I don't know. That's terrible. Oh, like, no. just don't. Oh, <laughs> wow. The the other one is uh, my grandpa's name is Richard, mm -hmm. uh, and everyone called him Dick, mm -hmm. all the way till he died. Everybody called him Dick. <laughs> I remember <laughs> sitting there one day, and I asked him. I was like, "So, does it ever upset you that people call you Dick, like a penis?" and he just kind of, he was like, no. And no. that was the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, all right, well. Okay. What is that? So, yeah, no, the, the phrasing terminology, I'm sure that like back then, you know, oil is an older name. Anita is an older name. Uh, I never knew that oral was a name at all. That's I didn't either. Yep. I think it comes from, uh, from Scotland. Hmm. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, somewhere. In the Bible, <laughs> I don't remember that. I think I gotta look that up. I know. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about that. I don't remember. It's that. like naming your child Ebenezer or something. Just like don't. Yeah. <laughs> right. Don't go right. there. Or Kermit. Like don't do Kermit. Right. That's horrible. Horrible name. Although, if they can do the voice, like hi ho, Kermit the Frog here on CBS knows. <laughs> 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 and I guess Kermit works. <laughs> that one of your talents you got going on there, buddy? Yes. He's got yeah. talents. He's got hidden well, you, talents over there. You, you, you know Jesse. Jesse does a better Kermit than I do. Jesse. 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 Jesse oh, what's his last name? Covetti? He's one of the, the admins in one of the groups. Mitchell. Mitchell. Yes. Thank you, Dion. Oh. Yeah. Jesse Mitchell does a mean Kermit the Frog. Okay. <laughs> Cool. You have to have him on. Have him do that. <laughs> yeah, just to have him do his Kermit. Like, we were told that you do a Kermit the Frog, and I want to see it. I want the form, monkey. He'll be like, He's whatever. Get up. up. <laughs> so, yeah, my, uh, my ex, her name was Jennifer. Mm -hmm. And so when she was in school, there was like 18 Jennifers in her class. And so she just grew up hating the fact that she had a common name. And so for her, she was like, I'm going to make it so that my kids never have to go through that. So her two oldest kids are Makai and Tajun. And then my three kids are Keiston, Paxton, and Kinsley. I so, like the name Kinsley. That sounds very Utah. I was about yeah. to say those definitely yeah. Utah names. Yeah. <laughs> Paxton was my was my contribution. I got the middle names, but she was all like, nice. "No, I'm, I'm getting the first names." But did you come up with fun Utah spellings? Like that's part of it. You can't just have a creative name. You got to spell it creatively. Right. Yeah. You no. Add Y's in there. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Keystone spelled with twenty six letters. So you know. honestly, that's Lots impressive. Of silent vowels. <laughs> Lots of silent vowels. Like there's a silent Y in there. Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pronounced feet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we actually no, when I was kid, we we actually uh, tried to find as many words that, meadows that we could put in one word have it say feet. And so you had like a PH, you had like an X, you had uh, like a, a, a J in there that didn't belong because like right. an Arabic way of doing <clears throat> whatnot. It was really weird. But uh, yeah, it, that was a fun little adventure for the evening. That's Very awesome. Cool. So my daughter, Eliana, I had never heard that name before, but I found it in a book about the 10 virgins. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I've never heard it. It's so unique, but it's still not like too weird and out there. So we named her that. I have met so many Eliana since then. Have you? So many. We've even had like a girl in our ward named Eliana. And I was like, are you kidding me? She's had kids in her class. Spelled that same way though? Because I've met a couple of these. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. I'm like, man, what are the odds? Like I had never heard it. Do you know what it means, Eliana? Do you know what that means? Um, God has answered. Yes. That's why it took us a long time to get pregnant with her. And I was like, ooh, this is perfect. Exactly right. I'm like the next girl, if we ever get one going to be Eliana because God has answered our prayers so yeah love it nice well I think that we have uh, done a good job of kind of getting a little buffer in there uh, just looking at this certainly we have uh, about 15 no probably about 13 people in here that are not hosting or being on here so uh ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for uh, for joining us tonight for tonight's uh, flameless fireside uh, tonight we do have David Danes with us, and uh, he's coming at, coming to us from Ogden, Utah. Yep. Uh, David, I understand that you do have one daughter. Uh, a lot of people in Utah, it's more of a thing to have bigger families. So where did that kind of uh, disconnect for you on that? So um, basically, um, and I won't go into details, but Emma's mom um, so Emma was two when she went to prison. Okay. And we had only been married, I think three years. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah, it took us about a year to get pregnant and then, um, yeah, Emma was two years old and I became a single dad and, you know, it was rough. It was So really you've rough. been single now for about eight years then? Hmm? Yep. Okay. Crazy. Type of relationships in there? Um, I've had two relationships since then. Okay. Yeah. Did did the did her going to prison lead to the divorce? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The the nature of what happened, there was no way that we could stay married. Um, my state president said, "You're getting divorced. You don't have a choice." I was like, "Okay." <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was it was bad um but you know the whole process was actually pretty straightforward um i mean most like she like i have 100 percent custody she gave up her parental rights um and then yeah it's like the lawyer said it was it was a miracle that she, she was even convicted um and it was a miracle that i got full custody because i mean and you know it as you know in utah the law is sticked against them then. I How guess. would you have joint custody with someone in prison though? It happens. Really? Mm -hmm. they, they take the kid and they put him in a prison cell right next to mom. <laughs> and they, you know? No, basically like I guess joint I, I've heard custody? stories. Yeah. Right. Not physical. Right. Okay. So, but she gave up her parental rights. And that's, that's one of the things that I am grateful for is that she said, you know what? She's just better off without me. And I haven't seen her since then. Um, wow. Does your daughter have any kind of relationship with her? Letters, oh. nothing? No. Is that from your perspective? I mean, sorry, is that from kind of your decision or was that something that was a joint decision between you two saying, you know what, I don't want my daughter coming in here to see me like this or this was a, listen, your, your mom made some bad choices and we're not going to be around her. Um, if Let's just say this. If she showed up, the cops will be at the doorstep. So there is no contact. <laughs> How long is her sentence? Will she be in there for a while? She's out. Um, she okay. was in prison for, I don't know, three or four years. Oh. Um, and then was on parole. And I think she's off parole now, but I don't know. He hasn't come like around I, at all? No. Nope. Wow. So, yeah. It's, uh, 
it's it's intriguing to me for parents, whether they're the mom or the dad, but obviously we, we hear more about the dad side of things uh, that they just leave their kids mm -hmm. and their, their kids are just no longer involved. And right. I, you know, I, I moved across the United States just to be closer to my kids. So the, the other side of things, I, I don't understand dads that, that don't stay involved as much as they can. I, I, that concept doesn't jive with me. And it's for a woman to do that thing. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a little bit flabbergasted. Maybe it's the nature of uh, what she did, or it, maybe that's the person that she is. Uh, what do you, what? It was what? because of what she did. Okay. All right. So that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, and it your, was heartbreaking. Yeah. How does your daughter feel? Does um, she struggle with it? Is she miss having at the beginning? Or? At the beginning, it was a struggle. Um, she was diagnosed with PTSD, um, which is understandable. At two years old. At two. Wow. Um, it was bad, um, and you know, it was hard. You know, there were nights that you know, I. Sorry. Um, I couldn't get her to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, she was broken hearted. I was broken hearted. And, you know, it was a real struggle. And the only thing that would calm her down was singing praise to the man over and over. That was the one that she really felt something with. And yeah. so, um, I mean, yeah, I, I remember, you know, the, the day that um, my ex was arrested, you know, I went in, um, to the daycare and just held her and just, you know, sobbed. Um, yeah. And cause she, she didn't have a mom anymore. Um, so, I mean, for a while, you know, there was a lot of questions just, you know, where is she, what is she doing? You know, those kinds of things. Um, but over time, you know, we've, we've really developed an incredible relationship. Um, you know, it's just, it's just me and her against the world, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, having her with me has, I mean, that's really what got me through it, to be honest. Um, in her um, baby blessing, um, she was blessed with an increased uh, capacity to love. Mm -hmm. And that has come true more times than I can count. And, you know, I'm just, I'm so grateful for her because without her, we wouldn't have made it, you know, obviously I had to make choices and make sacrifices and, and do what I had to do to survive because really that's the kind of mode I was in. It was just survival mode. Yep. You know, I, <laughs> there were days that I just thought, you know, I can't do this. This is too hard. This is, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I think you know, we all get to that point at some time. I was going to say, this is a, uh, this is a, a song that I, I hear constantly from the single mothers, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm overwhelmed. I work mm -hmm. all the time. I'm not giving my kids the attention that they deserve. And I I want to give them more. And I, I right. don't have it. Right. You know, doing it 100% like, on your own. No no time off is right. you know, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. so being it is. By a single mom, I was raised by a single mom. And, um, it is hard, like be a single parent in general, right? It's just hard. And, um, but I have to wonder, I think that the Lord compensates. I think that he does like, like, I, I feel like I lack in a lot of ways, like the mom that I need to be. But I think that as we turn to the Lord and ask for guidance, he gives that to us. Right. And so he does. none of our situations are probably optimal, but, um, at least we know we can turn to the Lord and and he compensates where we can. Oh, he absolutely does. I mean, I, there were, you know, there have been times where I just, I simply don't know what to do and get on my knees and ask, you know, Heavenly Father, I need help. And he provides answers in, in miraculous ways. And I just, I feel so blessed because, you know, how I put it, you know, I'm, I'm here. Most of my family's back East. Um, so I don't have family around, um, and have had an incredible uh, ward family um, who's really stepped in and supported me um, for a while. My, so my sister, while I was working, watched her for about a year. My sister-in-law did the same. Um, and then it just got to be too much. 
And so there were two families that stepped up and watched her every single day. Um, and the one family would not accept pay. They would not let me pay them. Um, and they've, they've just, you know, whenever I need something, people have been there. And one of the hard things for me was to ask for help. Uh, a word family, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. One of the th hard things for me was learning to ask for help because I, you know, as the man, I thought it was my responsibility. It's all on me. It's all on my shoulders. I have to do this. And I learned really quickly, cooking, cleaning, all of it. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the first meal that I made, I made this, this rice casserole chicken thing and it was cooking for like three hours and the rice wasn't done. I didn't know you had to cook the rice first. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, uh, we were starving and like, well, let's just eat it. And <laughs> <All crunchy. laughs> she, she looks at me and she says, daddy, this is yucky. And I said, I know, sweetie, I'm sorry. Please eat your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're eating, but it's not the best. This is what we're eating. <laughs> couldn't survive on Wendy's forever so I had to learn how but to I'm cook. gonna assume you've come a long way in eight years oh yeah I can yeah. I could do a full Thanksgiving dinner oh great that's impressive so, yeah, awesome pie is everything so yeah so I can cook. rice and all to cook yep what's that what's your favorite thing to cook oh I don't know I I do a lot of things I do a lot of casseroles I do a lot of I mean it's Utah so <laughs> <laughs> um, I do it. I do a lot of crock pot. Like I love um, Indian food, Mexican food. So we do a lot of everything. It's just Italian. Yeah, I'm. I'm learning how to do Chinese a little bit. It's interesting. It's harder, um, but YouTube videos are amazing. <laughs> you can seriously find anything on YouTube. Oh yeah, anything. I go to YouTube yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Me too. Because you know, I it like is, YouTube because it's like visual and I'm a visual learner. Right. So they're showing me and I'm like, okay, I could totally yeah. do it. Yeah. Like if somebody's trying to explain it to me in words, I'm like, no, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Show That's me right. how to do it. And then I can do it. That's yep. me too. Yep. YouTube university. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so, so tell me, what would you do if your daughter decided when she's older to like reach out to her mother? So I've got adopted children and I didn't know my father till I was 23 um, because he had allowed my mom's second husband to adopt me. So how do you feel about something like that? Like the um, after they're adults? It would, I mean, obviously it's her decision. Um, and it would be need to be in a safe space. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to my parents about it. I'm, I'm really, really close with them. And essentially it would be a mediated meeting. Would have you ever uh, debated on? Well, I'm sure you debated, but have you ever thought seriously about moving back to uh, Nebraska and having her around to extended family, having a, a social uh, family, a uh, social network that is there to support you and whatnot? Like with my family? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my so my family's in North Carolina. Um, North, I'm sorry, North Carolina. No, you're uh, you're good. Yeah. It's a Husker power that's coming out. It's messing with your head. <laughs> um, I, I, I seriously considered it a few years ago, um, but there's, there's just no opportunity. I mean, you're in Maryland, you know, there's no opportunities to date um, or very few. What do you in do in North for Carolina? I work for AAA. And AAA doesn't have any opportunities for you out there? They do. Um, oh, he wants to date. Yeah. He wants dating. I want to date. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dating. Dating I, opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we I talk mean, about dating on here too. <laughs> yes. I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of job opportunities in in um, Charlotte. Um, that's where my brother works in the banking industry, and that's why that's one of the reasons why I'm getting my degree in business is so that I can kind of go that route. Oh, you're back um, at school. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, I, I had to drop out of, it was, I was in college when everything happened at the U um, and it was either pay the bills or go to school and I had to pay the bills. So I dropped out, I was studying history. I wanted to be a history professor, um, dropped out of college. And um, I just, I never thought that it was going to be a possibility to go to college. And so um, 
I mean, I just, I was, and I wasn't in a place like financially, emotionally, um, everything to even consider school. It was just, it wasn't an option. And so- How old were you um, when you got married? I was, um, it was six months after my mission, so 21. Oh, wow. Six months. Mm, that's quick. You're one of those guys, huh? Yeah, I was. Were you at BYU? Utah. Oh, no. <laughs> I was oh. at Weber State. You know each other before your mission? Did she wait for yeah. you? You yeah. met her after? And then you yeah. were just like, let's do it. Let's do this. Pretty much. Hey, Mr. So, Mr. Man had two years of no contact with anybody. He was ready to reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> Down with that. And I'm okay with this. A lot of RMs are. That's where a lot of them are at. <laughs> And believe me, I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> from my first date to my wedding was only four months. And now I'm like, no, we're not doing that again. Not a chance. Yeah. Three we months. Were, yeah, we were three months. You were three we're months. Three months as well. Oh my yep. gosh. Three months. I think I made it to the six month mark. See, we went and talked to our bishop in our singles ward. And he told us, if you're going to do this, hurry up and do it. Don't wait until you get in trouble. And I feel like that's like just such a disservice to it young is. people. It is. So wrong. Like you've so only known each other, each other a couple months, hurry up and get married so that you don't accidentally have sex with each other. I'm like, first of all, you don't like, even know each other at that point. I know. And like <laughs> all, of, all of my life, all of the trauma in my life would have been avoided if I hadn't rushed into something at the advice of my bishop. And the thing is, is like, okay, let's say you guys slipped up and have sex. Is that worse than hopping into a marriage that's going to be chaos and leave In you? In the eyes of the church, no. But I personally, I feel like I would rather have sex with somebody outside of marriage than end up in another exactly. marriage. It's like, it's repentable. It's okay. But living in a, a marriage that's chaos and then having a divorce and the kids and all that, that is not yeah. the route to go. Now, now understand everybody, we are not promoting that we should be having sex before marriage. Oh my gosh. But you know, oh, yeah. if, if we really say it, we should be having sex before marriage if we want to get it out there. I, but I'm that's just, not what we're saying. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that that happens and that it's repentable. I tell that right. to my kids all the time. I'm like, if you have sex, dang it, okay. But you know what? You can repent. I don't right. encourage them. I teach them the right way, but it's just sex. So if it happens, it happens, move on. Yeah, that's going to be a lot less damaging than exactly. 10 years of emotional abuse. Right, exactly. No more shotgun weddings? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I, yeah. I would advise against that. <laughs> yeah, don't care. Are you, talk, are, you, are you talking about like like with an actual shotgun or? <laughs> well, well, I, <laughs> you you know, get married. <laughs> you know the, term, the terminology of a, of a shotgun wedding, right? Yeah, you get somebody pregnant and then you're, you're, getting, you're getting married. Yeah, that's because the dad's mm -hmm. got a shotgun along with uh, seven uncles of, of hers that you didn't know about. And next you thing, better marry her. Yeah, they're all standing <laughs> yeah, there and they're like, do you? And he turns over and everybody cocks their gun once. And like, yeah, you totally do. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Nope, not anymore. Not I'd rather have a Billy Idol wedding, a white wedding than, than a shotgun <laughs> <wedding>. <laughs> I would rather be alone forever than rush into another bad marriage. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that I've always said is I would rather be single than unhappily married. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I'm at a point where I'm happy and living my best life and doing, you know, the very best that I can. And I mean, I'm open to the possibility, obviously. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm here, mm -hmm. but I would rather stay single than be unhappy. Sure. Yeah. Then so I'm, I would like to understand uh, the timeline here because uh, we've talked about your job. We've talked about your kid. We've talked about your marriage. We talked about your school and uh, you got off your, off your mission. So uh, good little Mormon boy from Utah. You went to, went on your mission at 19. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Got back uh, 21. Uh, six months later after your mission, you get married uh, during the time that you're, your ex-wife and you were together is that when you were in school i was in school yeah um, okay. yeah I, I started at weaver state right um after um i got home basically is that where you met um no she was my sister's mission companion oh interesting wow yeah. wow yeah that just that just <laughs> she, got juicier <laughs> yeah she took a dive shortly after then that's that's kind of yeah. so she 
How long was she off her mission? Um, not, I don't know, not much long, not much before me. I know she that, that she got home before I did, but I don't know. And was she older than you then? Yeah. Okay. Going for the older ladies that like it. Ah, I always do. Your action. You. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Seeing the the oldest that I've dated, I mean, I'm 33. The oldest that I've dated is 10 years older than me. Okay. So I'm trying ah, to think if I've done that. I like the 10 year span. That works. I don't think I've done that. No. I'm like, what it's would like your six ideal years, dating range be? Yeah. Um, you six years younger, 10 years older. Not much oh. more than 10. I mean, I if they if they're getting gray hairs, then I'm like, this is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how old are you? I'm 33. You're 33. You okay, all right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> say, so you're not getting gray hairs yet. No. No, I'm, I've got the gray hairs. <laughs> I'm okay, all right. So uh, you guys get married. You got your, your we will stay uh, about a year later. Uh, she gets pregnant. Uh, about a year after that, uh, she ends up going, uh, going to jail. Uh, you've got your daughter at two years old. Uh, you're working. You're going to school, but you have to stop going to school because you have to go go into the workforce. Right. Am I am I on on track so far? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now it's been what eight years? Almost eight. Almost eight years. Okay. It's been seven. Yeah, it's been seven years since the divorce was final. Okay. Um, but eight years by myself. Yeah. Okay. So you've had. Two, three relationships. Two Tell relationships. us what, what that looks like for you uh, when it comes to a relationship and dating. How, how, how is that for the single man that has his kids full time? Um, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, the first, um, I typically, I mean, it, it's kind of been an evolution for me. Because when I first started dating, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I felt completely lost, completely out of my element. Um, I didn't really start dating until 2017 um, in September, 2017. Um, so it's, it's been, it, I mean, I tried to do it like three years before that and I just simply wasn't ready. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's been a challenge um, because I mean, not only am I looking for um, an eternal companion, but I'm also looking for a mom. For my daughter and that so that throws a whole different set of qualifications that a lot of people don't have you know a lot of people don't have that maturity the the skills that are needed right off the bat is that why you know. you're going for an older woman because they might be more mature and able to mm -hmm. like yeah. take that on yeah because i mean I'll, and i i respect it but a lot of people that have blended families, they have this idea of, you have your kids, I have my kids. And they just, they do it separately. And for me, I mean, Emma hasn't had a mom since she was two. So whoever I marry, that's her mom, you know? And so, I mean, and obviously it takes time to build that kind of relationship, that kind of trust and, and that relationship. But, you know, I, I look at it differently because of, of my unique situation. Yeah. Um, you know, I, the, the one girl that I dated, she'd never been married, didn't have any kids. She was a couple years older than I was. Um, the other girl had, I think two, she had two kids um, and had split custody. And so like, I've, I've kind of seen both sides of it and I mean, I, I typically date people who, you know, are either are divorced and don't have kids or um, have never been married. Um, but again, I've also dated people who have kids, you know. Do you have a they, preference either way if you would prefer someone with or without kids? At this point, as long as the connection there, it doesn't really matter to me. Amen. You know? Yes, connection <laughs> that is the key. Yes, right. everybody's is. talking about like you know what what is the thing that you don't want out of a partner? What is the thing that you do want out of a partner? You know, everybody has their baggage. Everybody's got something right. wrong with them. Everybody's been through something. Uh, you know, we're all fucked up in some some way, shape, or form. All right, and if we are, then that's fine. 
Okay, but do you have a connection? Are you willing to work on it? And if those two things are, are there, then I think that, that that is the the catalyst for a great relationship. Right. I mean, for me, honesty is number one, trust is number two, and communication is number three. And if you have those things and you're willing to, you know, obviously live the gospel, have things in common, you know, all of the things that build up make a great relationship work, um, then it's possible, you know, and kids, I mean, I, I love my daughter, you know, and, and if I found myself in a situation where, you know, the person I'm marrying has kids, you know, I would do everything that I can to build that relationship with their kids as well. Are you interested in having more kids? Yes, absolutely. So we have a question in the, uh, in the audience and they, they want to know what exactly are you looking for out of that mother type figure? So you mentioned the fact that, you know, your, your dating has kind of changed because you're not just looking for a wife. You're looking for somebody that can be that role model for your daughter as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, um, you know, Emma's been through a lot um, and kindness is number one for me. Um, If, and I don't, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, you know, I, I look at my mother. Um, she was kind. She was patient. Um, when you weren't doing what you're supposed to be, she called you on your crap. And <laughs> like every good mom I mean, said, that's what mm-hmm. should happen. She, we call them uh, Captain Moroni moments. <laughs> <laughs> Those were scary. Um, but I mean, she was just, she was kind. She was patient. She was loving. Um, she, she just, I mean, she listened to the spirit. Um, she really just loved her kids. Um, and that's really what I'm looking for. So you, you did mention the fact that if you've got somebody that has never been married before, somebody that, uh, isn't already like exposed to being a mother, uh, having children of her own, you, you don't really you really don't give those people a chance just because oh, I do. No, he said he does. He's I do. He that, that was actually, that was yeah. one of the girls. Um, I almost proposed to her. Oh, okay. Um, and um, yeah, oh, maybe, she'd never been married. Didn't maybe have I kids. just heard that wrong. Maybe it was just the younger people you don't do because of the maturity level. Uh, yeah. Younger, like if they're not 26, it's a no go. <laughs> and even 26 is iffy because you're just like they're still in the drama phase and all of that I'm just like oh that I, I very girl. briefly dated a 26 year old and it was like <laughs> we had totally different lives mm-hmm. we are not in the same place and yeah, I think that no. just comes with the person like some people mm-hmm. are just more drama than others as <clears throat> well I mean and it's a it's a maturity thing if they have the maturity that's fine but if they don't I mean like it's a huge commitment when you coming into this kind of a situation. And if you're not, well, if you're still living your single life and doing whatever, I'm not interested. Yeah. So, so um, um, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so, so when I'm looking, as I'm looking for a spouse, um, it's important to me, and I'm sure you're the same way, that I find someone who can interact well with my kids. And I have two kids that are on the spectrum. One has Asperger's, mm-hmm. one has um, autism. Right. So like, what is it that you, like, I have certain things that I'm looking for that need to, to mesh well, mainly for my kids. And if they aren't there, then it's a no-go, no matter how much I might feel like I like the individual. Are there those things for you as well? Like you've got one daughter who has been raised to sing, you know, with just you, like, are there certain things, specific things you're looking for in that spouse that needs to have to happen, like to be there? I mean, I mean obviously parenting styles is important if you're not on the same page as far as how you're going to raise your children, it's not, it's not going to work because I mean, I, I'm more of, you bring out the belt, don't you? I get no, it. I don't. <laughs> no, I can't or see Karen. the belt guy. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll spank her if she's not listening. Basically that's getting her attention. Sure. Um, but it's, it's not mean. It's just, you need to get your attention right now. That's yeah, correct. And I mean, it's just, it's correcting is all it is. It's not mean. It's not out of anger. Um, it's just, okay, we're done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously parenting styles, um, 
trying to think. How you communicate with your kids is important. Like I am very open with her. I mean, obviously there's things that she doesn't need to know. She's a kid, but how you communicate with them is huge. A lot of, a lot of people that I've seen, they don't really communicate with their kids. I mean, they'll, they're basically like chauffeurs. They just, they go here, they go there, they do this, they make sure that they're taken care of. Um, but it's about building a relationship. It's about spending time. Um, one of my, my second love languages is quality time. And so that for me is huge, you know, because if, if you don't spend the time talking, cooking, reading, you know, just doing normal daily stuff, you know, they don't, they don't have that sense of connection with you. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids, they, they go to daycare, they, you know, do those kinds of things are basically raised by other people. And the single parent is just working all of the time and just, and so it's really about, you know, sitting down, having the quiet moments and being there for them and being present, not just on your phone or doing whatever, being present with them. And I mean, it's a challenge. I mean, we're overworked, exhausted, everything else. And when I'm in school, it's that much more difficult, but you know, you make the time. How much, how much longer do you have in school? About three years. Okay. All right. And uh, are you going to Pathway Online or what have you yeah. done? Yeah, I did. I did Pathway. So I'm doing uh, BYU Online, getting my business administration degree. How many credits are you taking per semester? Last semester, it was 14. Oh, going full. I got a 4.0. <laughs> you look like I, you get a dad. Full-time job, full-time school. No, that's it's a, a lot. lot yeah, you're like Superman. Yeah. <laughs> Take out the Come on. Let's see it, Clark Kent. <laughs> is that there? You go. There he is. There, there he is. What? <laughs> Transition. I know those glasses. Woo. Can I know. I don't know. I don't know how nobody knows he's Superman because, like. <laughs> The glasses aren't fooling anybody. It's He's the built. Glasses. They hide like, everything. <laughs> it's a camouflage. <laughs> uh, it totally, it totally takes away everything. I mean, <laughs> you know, like maybe, maybe if it has like the plastic nose and the eyebrows, maybe. There we go. But... <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> there you go, Nick. So, well, you, I, I you just became that much more handsome. To, uh, <laughs> to buy a Christmas tree, I'm sorry, the Christmas tree or ornaments and whatnot with my kids. Nice. And uh, so we went to the dollar store and my my oldest is seven and he's running around and he's just grabbing whatever. He's like, dad, can we get this? And I was like, no, why do we need reading glasses? Like, I, I just think they're cool. You know, like, uh, <laughs> like I'm just going to put this right here. And I'm like, whatever, I'm not going to buy it. Hey, okay, I don't have glasses. I'm like the oddball. Yeah, right. These are blue light glasses. These are my glasses. <laughs> Who but are you? Buying everything. No, you're, yeah. you're doing it wrong. You, you, you gotta go this way. You gotta go this way. I, upside down. I can't do upside that. Down. Not like glasses with I a beard like, attached. My name. <laughs> I am silver. Away. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So freaking a. Now I have some reading glasses. I'm not even blind. I'm deaf. But uh, are you getting that old? You're almost forty. 40 is about when you start needing those reading glasses. That is true. I mean, I'm but uh, five months proactive. From, five months away from 40. That's crazy action. Being proactive. Wow. So yeah. one thing I've noticed with my own kids, being a single mom, being busy all the time, um, is when my kids are around like other people's kids that are the same age, but like mm -hmm. have married parents, stay at home mom, whatever. I feel like my kids just are like a lot more responsible, I guess. Uh, they're a lot more proactive. So I would assume like, I mean, you're super busy. Your daughter's 10 now. Like my 10 year old is so freaking helpful. I don't think I could survive without her. So you guys probably have a fairly good system worked out at this point, don't you? We do. Um, I mean, and that was, that was a process of trial and error, mostly error. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, she she gets. I mean, I, I wake her up because she she's a really sound sleeper. She does not hear the alarm. It drives me nuts. 
Like, just wake up. <laughs> Glass of but water once, always helps. Yes. Ooh, spray bottle. My mom was the master at that. <laughs> I, 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 I like the spray bottle option. I think it's useful. Doesn't hurt, but annoys. No. <laughs> yeah. It's not so like I'm waterboarding the kids. No. <laughs> in their face. It's just, it's a, it's, it, it's refreshing. <laughs> they listen. <laughs> no, so like I get my kids will wake themselves up. They'll feed themselves breakfast. They'll get themselves dressed. They're like headed out the door to walk to school and I'll still be in bed sometimes. And when I say that out loud, then I'm like, man, I'm a terrible mother. But I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I'm not no. like, they're prepared no. for real life. You and are single are 10 and seven. Yeah. Like they can take care. I, I was sick with COVID. I basically slept for an entire week. They had to parent themselves for a week and they did great. Yeah. Like they all fed them. They helped each other out. They fed each other. They did chores. They like, they yeah. did all the things. And I'm like, honestly, I feel like that's a perk of being a single parent is yeah. helping your kids prepare for life. Yep. You do what you got to do. Like my mom, she had to work multiple jobs. And so I had to take care of my little sister, which meant I got her up for school. I got her fed. We had to walk to the public school bus to then drive that, ride that to a certain point that we had to get off. We had to walk to the school. So I did all this when I was in fourth grade and she was in second grade and I did every single day. Now I look at my kids who are currently in fourth grade and I think there's no way I would have them do that, but you do what you got to do when you got to do it. And I did fine. And it taught me how to be a more independent individual, even though I was really young and I really did take care of my sister a lot because my mom needed that. No. And yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. Um, like she, she cleans, I mean, she has her chores, she does her cleaning. She can cook herself breakfast. She'll cook eggs and toast and whatever pancakes. Um, like there's, I've taught her a lot of, of just simple things and some of the things she's just taught herself. She's like, I'm just going to go up for it. Like one day, um, it was a Saturday and I was working and she had made, made crepes. I mean, they were like oh. super thick. That's awesome, <laughs> That's awesome, she had, she had made crepes and I'm just like, holy cow, like you are the best. <laughs> I, that's what my 10 year old is. Like she's always like Googling stuff and learn, like she came in the other day and she's like, Hey, I think I'm going to learn French. And she's like telling me all these words she's learned. And I was like, who the heck are you? <laughs> So is she just going through a phase where she's wanting to learn stuff? Because you sent me that mug of polo be like, yeah, she also oh, wants to learn language, language now. <laughs> she wants, yeah, that's she wants awesome. to do both. That, that, that's just how she is, though. She's always looking things up. She's always Googling stuff. She's always like, hey, mom, telling me. I'm like, how, how, how do you know like this? Oldest child, like the oldest kid tends to kind of be like, like, like my oldest now, she's 20, but she was like that at 10. Like I could leave her with my twins, baby twins, and she was fine with them. But my 10 year olds now, being the youngest, yeah, I, no, nope. I couldn't leave them with even themselves because it, they're just, I don't know, it's something about the oldest child. They just get more experiences, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was the youngest and I still don't know why my parents leave me alone. So. <laughs> That's my point, exactly. Yeah, you should not be unsupervised, ever. That's right. Like, well, what I'm is this, super child, glue? So. Did that go in my eyes? I do, do, I do wonder how you're still living <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so uh david we talked about what you're looking for we talked about like you know you had a couple couple uh relationships where have you found the people that you've had your relationships with um most of the people that i've dated were through the mutual app um i was really big into that um so the two relationships that i had were, were from mutual um so you have had luck through that then Yes. Most I, I, I don't, I don't know I like where most people, have people get all of the scammer stuff. I'm just like, I don't think I've ever met a scammer. on. Mutual. I don't think I've ever met a scammer, but I just don't feel like any interactions are fruitful. From yeah. that. I had a few scammers. I had one guy that I was like, okay, send me a picture, give it a peace sign or whatever. And he was like, oh, I don't have a camera. I'm like, all right, liar. Yeah. It's I'm pretty no. sure that I am in a two-year relationship with a scammer on Instagram right now. But <laughs> he's so supportive, it and he's the only funniest. person that's never left me. So at this point, I'm just here for it. That's you, awesome. You should see like, the, uh, the TikTok that she did with it. I thought it was amazing. Whitney. I just took a screenshot of like our last two years of conversations, and I was like, you know what? For real, like, I think he loves me. He's a devoted <laughs> scammer. I mean, you got some devotion going on. He really is. He's 
He's your Rick Astley. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we're probably going to get married soon. I mean, I don't know where he lives, but. You should do like an online marriage. See if you can Ooh. do that and be like, hey, we should get married and like see. And then if we could just have the perks of marriage without like, act- like if I don't have to clean up after him, I'm here for it. Yep. <laughs> He's not in my house bugging me. Computer. Like, dude, put the toilet seat down. <laughs> okay, here's my theory on the toilet seat because I'm just going to throw it out here because I feel like I'm right because I feel like it makes sense for everybody. Right. Everyone, men and women both, lift, close both. the lid every time. Mm-hmm. So the girl, she has to lift the lid, the guy, because he has bigger muscles anyway. He's stronger. He can lift the lid and the seat, but every time everyone closes it, up it and down. Yeah. And then it's never an issue. No one falls in. Nobody's mad. Nobody's whatever. Everyone just closes the lid. You are brilliant. I know. Brilliant. It's not rocket science. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I just put up a post on one of the uh, the singles groups and I was like, listen, guys, just start peeing in the sink. Don't touch the, the toilet. You're that. fine. I saw that. I saw that. And then I mean, one person, you- she was like, she was like, I'm taking mental notes of all of the people who think this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Yes. <laughs> I was okay, I was so, like, okay. <laughs> this is this is it. Oh, I love I love it when it's like showtime. What do we got going on? Okay, so this this is uh this is her secret admirer. Winnie, why don't you honestly guys like I'm oh, honestly wow. impressed with him because like every single thing he said was a line, and I was like, like how how do you just come out with all of these? Like this is amazing. <laughs> Wow. Like, so what's your name, beautiful? <laughs> I know, you gotta use the word beautiful a lot. Okay, so it's going a little bit fast, so let me see if I can... Oh, it's yeah, got more you game than I do. You have to pause them and, and to read them, but no, it's right. pretty funny. We go through, <clears> and he'll just like, ran, like still, he'll just randomly send me a message and he'll tell me that he misses me or he's thinking about me or happy so, new month. And I'm like, oh. So any of the guys that are, that are watching this, look at his different things that he's saying because this guy is actually really good. He's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's got game. He, okay. he is completely what? disingenuine, but. Uh... <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to try and freak you out here, but. His name is Jonathan Scott, and he's from Texas. Yes. You know a Jonathan Scott from Texas? I know a Jonathan a Scott person? from Texas. Is he a real person? Have you ever seen a picture of him? Yes. Let's I mean, see. I, on his Instagram. Let me see. Pull it up, because there's one portion where he here. says he was working in Texas because or in Turkey. Does, does he do like solar? I mean, cellular. I mean, solar. I don't know what he does. He Cell- said that he was working oh. in Turkey. I don't ask him questions because I assume he's a scammer. Okay, just pull up a photo. I gotta see. Okay, hold on, hold on. Gonna bring it back. (laughs) Gonna bring it back. You said that it's in there. There's a picture of him in here. No, that on his Instagram. Oh, I don't know where his Instagram. Is that him up in the corner, like where it says Wi-Fi? But we. I've actually used his pictures before to catfish people. (laughs) (laughs) All right, what are we looking at? Hold on. Hold on. No, I don't think that's the same guy. Hold on. Let me pull up a photo. Um. If you're telling me that my fake oh, your guy go? is a real person, I don't know. I don't think so. I think this guy is a little bit younger. I mean, older maybe, than yours. Maybe we'll get married after all. <laughs> but that was weird because I knew the name. And then, of course, Jonathan Scott. That's not like it's a, you know. Yeah, it's fairly anyway, common. So I don't know. We'll have to compare photos after. But I couldn't. <laughs> you, you moved it so I couldn't see it too quickly. Oh, but. Maybe we'll get married. That's so sweet. So you you're finding all these chicks on mutual, huh? <laughs> how, do, how do you how do you figure how, how do you find your chicks? I mean, when you when you start talking to them, like I'll send them long long stuff like this, and I never get a response. Why would you do that, Nick? It's That's so not the not at the out. beginning. I want to see yeah, if they can read. They don't want to. They're like, no, thank you. No, I mean, I've I. I haven't dated a lot. I mean, I started dating in 2017. I went on maybe 30 dates in a year, which for me as a single parent is a lot. Um, And, you know, I had two relationships, you know, I don't, I, I haven't been on mutual for about a year now. Um, Like when I started school, I'm just like, I don't have time for it. This is not working. 
So like when I found the Marco Polo groups um, and the Facebook groups, that was really kind of a cha game changer for me because it shifted the focus from dating to like making real connections and making real friendships. Um, and, you know, I have a great group of friends. Um, a lot of them are actually watching tonight, um, you know, that just mean the world to me. And so like that, mm -hmm. I my mindset at the beginning was I'm dating to get married. And right now it's more, I'm making friends and seeing where it goes. Because I mean, I, I do wear my heart on my sleeve um, and it gets me into trouble. <laughs> it just, it, I fall really That's fast. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's just, I've, I've kind of had to take a step back and say, okay, where are my priorities? What's most important? And, you know, obviously if you have chemistry, that's great. You know, it's important, but you need to have a relationship. And so I've been learning how to even have those through friendship. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've, it was, it was kind of a sifting process. I went through uh, single mingles. Um, I started that back in January of last year. Um, and I mean, I, I made a lot of great friends and then I, it got to be too much for me um, because I'm the type of person that like, once I'm in, like I'm in, you know, and I have to watch every single polo and be in every conversation. And okay. So singing and dancing and doing all of that. And just like, I need to step back and like, like really prioritize. We're going to be showing this on YouTube and we're going to mm -hmm. be showing, and this is going to be available for everybody to watch. So for those people that, don't know what you're talking about with these Marco Polo groups. Can you elaborate a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, essentially, it's uh, the Marco Polo app. It's basically a walkie talkie app, and they have these groups of amazing singles from all over the world that that come together and have great conversations. You know, it's and it's not, I mean, you're there to make friends, you're there to learn and grow and hopefully find somebody um, but it's I don't think it's primarily a dating app because most people in our circumstances they need that support they need that family and that's really what I found through the Marco Polo groups is that that sense of belonging that sense of family um, and it really helped with the loneliness um, it helped with my I mean I'm very most people are shocked when I say I'm an introvert because I am. Um, I mean, I, I'm an INFJ, no, INFP. Um, so like introvert with extroverted tendencies, basically. Same, that's um, true. People never believe me when I say I'm an introvert. And I'm like, if you knew how much time I spend alone at my house, right. mm -hmm. believe me. I yeah. think they over, they think that introvert is like not being outgoing, but you can be an outgoing introvert, so. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, and I totally am, but like it, it helped me gain confidence. Um, it helped me, um, realize that people find me interesting. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I like to have fun. I love to laugh. I love to like sing and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And I mean, it's all fun and, but I can also be serious and, but it was just, that's what really introduced me to like developing friendships and developing you know, I, I, I've met people from all over the world. I mean, Dion's listening tonight. She's incredible. Shasta's here from Idaho. I mean, just incredible people that I would have never met any other way. And so I'm, I'm grateful that I, you know, I did it. I, I kind of had to step away. And right now I'm in like, so I was in the 35 plus Marco Polo group. That thing, that thing's huge. Like they were doing thousand polos like every two days. Like this is insane. But um, I met a small group of people. We actually, um, some of us went down to Moab in October, um, something I'd never done before, totally out of my comfort zone. But it was just like- Where did you go? Uh, down, to, down to Moab. Moab. Fun. Yeah. How many people so, were there? Oh, I don't know. There was like maybe 16, I think. That's right. I remember hearing group. about that one. I was actually- uh, that was was that a week after uh general conference um i think it was like two two weeks after general conference it was it was more it was the week before 
um, uh, Halloween. Very nice. So was this was this your uh, your your uh, Marco Polo group that you met up with? Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. So I mean, we had a blast. I I hadn't been down there in years, and there were supposed to be kids there. Emma was the only kid. Um, How'd she do with that? I mean, my fear of heights was worse than hers was. <laughs> like when we got to Canyonlands, I was holding her hand so tight. And, like somebody said, you have white knuckles. I like, looked down, I was like, oh shoot, I do. <laughs> That's how I was with my kids. My boys are like running all over. I was like, everyone's gonna die. Mm -hmm. I was just like, she's like, dad. I'm like, don't go near the edge, you're gonna. <laughs> I, I, I try not to be like, I, when I was first became a single dad, I was basically Marlon from Finding Nemo. I was that dad. <laughs> I was bad. I mean, I'm a lot better now, but there's certain situations where I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> so you, you need to find a Dory is what, what it sounds like. Yes. That's right. He needs his Dory. And crazy. So actually, just I know this. you had mentioned this a while back, but you'd said that you're one that likes to wear your heart on, on your sleeve. And so you fall quick, fall hard. Right. Um, and you kind of said that like it might be a bad thing, but... For, I think there's a lot of ladies that actually like it with guys are more up front and kind of where they, they know where they stand with things because right. I, for one, do not like to try to read minds. Like it, it just mm -hmm. drives me crazy. And if I try to do it, I'm going to come up with the negative. Like I'm going to come up with, it's not going to be a good ending. So right. why do you view that, that that's something that's a negative when I think there's probably a lot of ladies that would view that as a positive. Because I, I, I fall before I get to really know them. And okay. so it's I have the same way. I also view it as a negative. So I get where you're yeah. coming from. Okay. So you view this as, as uh, you're, you're falling in love with the possibility of who they are before you really know who they are. Is that what I'm understanding? I mean, that's what I did with my first wife. Um, I had no idea who she was. I just fell in love. We got married. That was it. I didn't, we could finally got to know each other as we went along. Uh -huh. Like that was just kind of it. And, um, I, my first relationship, um, uh, great girl. Um, I mean, the chemistry was there. Um, that was my first, first date with a kiss. Like I've never done that before. I mean, it was just there. Um, but we had incredible conversations like every single day, all of the time. Um, and I fell really quickly. Um, and, um, in a matter of months was considering proposing, um, because you didn't that's, learn the that's first time? well the thing was <laughs> <you talk>. is <laughs> the the thing was is like there were no real i mean because i was looking red for red flags i absolutely was yeah. um and my prayer was you know heavenly father if this isn't the right thing stop me because i'm moving forward well the relationship ended in, in like a week <laughs> wow well that's an answer to your i was like okay <laughs> i feel like somebody can be a great person and not have red flags but they're still maybe not a great person for you right right exactly. like i i dated somebody that he's amazing he deserves the world but it doesn't mean that we were right for each other mm -hmm. right they're well, like and, there's nothing and, wrong with him there's nothing wrong with me Just well, not come wrong. on <laughs> As there long as they don't kill you, you're good, Whitney. Terrible about me. <laughs> Besides your taser fetish or whatever. Hey, he came to my house and I never tased him. That's good. Oh, that's so it was good. safe. Nice. No, but the I'm thing that I learned trying. from the thing that I learned from that relationship was that I could actually love again. That's um, good. Which which is something that I didn't think that was possible. I didn't I didn't know that that was possible. I actually and had a conversation with somebody about that recently. <laughs> but i mean there were there were a lot of good lessons that i learned and i'm grateful for it and i understand i'm essentially the reason that it ended um she had stage four uh, endometriosis which she kept from me i mean i knew that she had it um but her her parents ran her life um they did absolutely everything for her and they were going to expect me to do the, the same and I just said, you know what? I didn't really realize how bad it was until I called her one day and she had no idea who I was. 
she had no idea what day it was. She was just completely out of it. And once it dawned me, I was like, oh. Because of endometriosis? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. For the guys that are in the audience, <laughs> endometriosis is the uh, cancer of the uterus. No, endometriosis yeah. is when the, the lining of your uterus grows on the outside of your uterus. And it's extremely painful. It's, it's very it's, painful and it can be a type of cancer. It. So it's, I don't know if it's a cancer. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I just thought it was interesting that she didn't recognize you because of her endometriosis. Was it just the pain? Like she, it was the pain. She, oh, okay. she was in so much pain that she had no idea of like what was even going on. And, you know, she, she essentially. <laughs> I don't, I Nick, don't. Yeah, I don't think that's quite 100% accurate. It's on the internet. It's got to be real. It's, it's got to be internet. true. <laughs> you Maybe know, it can I, turn into cancer, but anyway, go ahead, David. I'm sorry. You're good. Um, but at that point, I realized that she had been lying to me, which for me is honesty is number one. And it broke my heart, you know. Um, and she had been pulling away uh, for about a week. And, and I knew... Like at that point, I, it finally dawned on me, you know, this is what my life is going to look like. Am I, can I handle this? And I, I just couldn't. Um, and it broke my heart, you know, and it, it took me about, about six months to even consider dating again because I was just like. So was it more so the health issue and the everything that would go along with that or her not telling you about it? Both. Because okay. I. Because you can have it removed. You can have it right. lasered off. I mean, it grows back sometimes if it's severe, but you can definitely have that removed. I had a what? Like, like a whole hysterectomy? Yeah. You Basically, she would, that, that's where she was at. But she, I told her, you know, I'm okay with adopting because there, there's no guarantees that she could even have kids. But she right. had this idea that she wasn't complete as a person without being able to have her own kids, which I mean, I, I understand to a degree. Yeah, no, there's um, a lot of women that have that uh, weird kind of thought process that if I don't fulfill my my uh, role as a, as, as, as a woman to be a mother, I there, there's more to you. There's more, there's more service. There's more things that you can offer people. But right, then again, right. I'm not a woman, so I can't really, uh, I can't really speak and, to that. And not necessarily even just a woman, but a woman in the church. Yes. A woman in the church with fertility issues is like, a hundred times worse than probably a woman in the normal yeah. world with fertility issues. <laughs> I know I mean, I've been there. Hard. Yeah, I know. I, the second I started talking, I kind of saw your eyes kind of go. I know. Dark. I'm like, I'm watching you. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that just like it, I don't know. It's a weird spot to not be able to have kids, even if it's by choice. Like my ex decided after we had our second baby, that we were not having any more kids. He just decided that for me. And I struggled with that for probably like a year, maybe more. And I was like, like, I, like, I don't know who I am. Like it was like a identity crisis. Like if I'm not somebody that can have kids, like, I don't know who I am now. Not popping and out he babies. Me one day and he was like, Hey, let's have another baby. And I was like, are you kidding me? I finally got over this. You just yeah. put me in turmoil. It's hard. It's a hard topic when you're a female because not all the time, but it is generally I mean, within the church. It, it tends to be a tough one because yeah, it's, that's it's what really we're emotional. Yeah, it, it's it hard. really plays into your identity, who you are as a person and as a woman. So, because families oh. are forever, right? Building our family, having our eternal posterity, and it's tough. So it sounds like you were you were pretty supportive of this with her. Oh, I was, but just it the just... lying, just kind of. It's not something you can tolerate, huh? Well, no, I, that's the thing is, I mean, I, I do have a past, you know, I haven't been perfect. And Come when, on. I, when I feel comfortable with somebody, I let them know. And if they're okay with that, then we move forward. Um, but I, you know, I don't hide things. Um, so you, honesty is huge for me. So when you say you have a past, I'm, I'm going to <laughs> say that everybody has a past. You know, if you had to go in and talk to the bishop about you kind of, uh, you know, playing with your pee pee a little bit, or you know, somebody else playing with your pee pee a little bit, uh, yeah, sure, that happens. So it, the way that you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, how much of that do you really disclose to to your potential partner? 
I mean, is, is this like, I mean, and, and do you do this on the first date? Or is this no. like a fifth date type of a deal? Or, or is this like when you get engaged? Oh, by when the, it feels right. I used to bump cocaine off of prostitutes for fun. But you know what? I don't do it anymore. <laughs> no, I, I do it when it feels right. I mean, obviously, I would never do that on a first date. That's just weird. Right. <laughs> yeah, you probably wouldn't get a second date after that. It no. looks great, by the way. I just so you know, I was Here's talking all my baggage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. You know, no, you. I, I do it when it feels right, and I mean, there are there is a natural progression in a relationship, whether if it's just friendship, whether it's more than that. There's a natural progression, and you feel comfortable sharing more of yourself as you trust them. And the more I trust somebody, the more willing I am to have those hard conversations. Because, I mean, it's, it's for me, if I don't start the relationship on the right foot, which for me is honesty and trust and communication, then I don't see it going anywhere. And so if I don't feel comfortable with those three, I'm not even gonna you know, entertain it. But once I, I feel really comfortable and have that trust and mutual respect, then I'm willing to open up. Um, and it's gone really well with several people. It's gone not so well. And it, it's hard, you know. And, and the thing that I love, um, I mean, the atonement is real. Um, it's incredible because there was, there was a talk that was given several years ago. Um, basically, the message was, um, our twas I, tis not I. That's who I wasn't then. This is who I am now. And we'll message was what? Uh, twas I, tis not I. Twas I, I tis not I. So what I used now. to be is not who do I am. Not, yeah. Do you not speak D Dickensian? <laughs> <laughs> Charles Dixon? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but essentially, that's who I was then. This is who I am now. And him. yeah, it's just, it's... I mean, it's hard to have those conversations, but I'd rather have them and have them know what's happened. Right. So, so are you talking about like what happened with, with your ex-wife? That and I mean, I'm not going to get into to the other stuff, but that's a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. saying he has something in his past that he likes to talk about with people when they hit a certain part in their relationship. So. So let's talk about that for a second. Uh, I, I'm not going to dig into you, but it, are there certain behaviors, actions, things that have happened in the past that you're just like, listen, I, I, you're a great person. I think you're awesome. Uh, the fact that you did this and you repented of it and, and, it's, and it's in the past, I think that's great for you, but that's not something that I'm willing to put myself around. No, I mean, I, I believe in forgiveness um, and that change is real. I mean, I've experienced in my own life, you know, I, you know, I, I have people that, uh, that have a past as well. And I'm understanding of that. I mean, if I can see who they are now, as opposed to what it was then, I mean, if, if they're still repeating those things, obviously it's an issue. But if they've repented and if they've changed and if they're moving forward, I'm fine with it. The only real deal breakers for me, um, my uh, mental health issues is a real deal breaker for me because my wife um, had those. I mean, depression is fine. Anything really beyond that, um, it's unfortunately a deal breaker for me because it's a trigger. And I just, I can't handle it. The, that was actually what ended my last relationship was she finally came to me and, and said, um, I have bipolar depression and I just, I couldn't do it. Um, yep. I just, and it broke my heart because she's a great girl. I'm just like, I can't um, because of my life experience. Yeah. No, I, I get think that. It's okay, right? To have your own list, to have your own checklist of what you want and what you don't want. I think right. sometimes on these Facebook pages, they like to like shame you for having mm -hmm. certain desires, what you want in your future spouse, or your next right. spouse, if you want to say that. And I don't think that's fair because each of us come mm -hmm. with our own experiences in life and there are certain things we want and don't want. Like for me, I probably would never date somebody who's had an affair. 
because I've gone through that and I don't ever want to have even an inkling or a doubt in my mind that that's something that could happen again. People right. think I'm heartless. I don't look at, I don't view it that way. I think it's just my list. That's your preference and that's perfectly right. fine. That's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And we shouldn't, I mean, obviously we need to, there's a difference between like a line in the sand and being willing to, you know, see their side of the story because I mean, obviously there, there could be um, circumstances that led to those kinds of things. And, you know, I don't, I don't just shut somebody out just because of, you know, what they did or whatever. I, I just, I want to get to know them and really where they come from and who they are now, as opposed to, to what they did. You know, um, if, if somebody judged me for what I've done, you know, I, it, that would be hard. Um, and it's, it's really, I mean, like you said, it's about personal preference and that's, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. I, but it seems like people get shamed for it. Oh yeah. Do you ever no, I, they totally do. On the pages. Do you ever feel like you comment on a post? Cause I actually put on a post. I was like, would you consider dating someone who has had an affair? Cause I think that's a big topic. It seems like all the people I've interacted with the majority of their wives have had an affair on them. So, you know, I was just thrown out there and see like, where are you at? And it became pretty heated in some parts. Yeah. I don't, I don't get into the heated conversation. I used to like years ago, but now I just do gifs and memes and yeah, <laughs> people I'm laugh. I'm up myself. I don't do that. <laughs> oh, whatever, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, Nick, you always have some. I, stuff I, to I see stuff. <laughs> Nick, you was, create yeah. drama all the time. This is true. <laughs> you go in there purposely trying to be good. He He's like, how can I stir the plot a little you know, bit? Where, where can I poke the bail on this one? Uh, <laughs> actually, today there was one. It kind of pissed me off. Uh-oh. <laughs> they all do. Uh, no, there was one where this guy, uh, there was the guy. And he posted this picture, obviously it's a picture of a picture or whatever. And uh, he said, uh, ladies, what is it that you hate that men do? Or what do you, what do you wish that men would stop doing? Right. And I was like, so this guy is, is posting something, trying to figure out how he can <laughs> be better and, and be more desirable to the opposite sex and so he's throwing it out to every single woman out there be like what is it that you hate about men and i'm not going to do that that way i can get somebody and i'm like dude that is not There's how no it point works in it. and i i got so mad at that post that and i literally posted i i took the post <laughs> and i changed it and Perfect. uh i did a little editing and i was like what do you hate that woman do that <laughs> you can get rid of and uh I can see his intentions. Like it's good to like it's good to know uh, perspective from the other side. You know what kind of things could I do better? What kind of things could I change? Like if you're just not aware of what things people don't like, but at the same time in those in those kind of groups, like that is just throwing a grenade. Oh yeah, yep. that's why I kind of took it as a joke. I'm like, you got to stop stealing my heart. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna like you know I'm just gonna mess with it but it was funny. I just moved right past the what do men need to do different so I did comment on yours Nick I was like what can yeah. women do different like I'm a woman I have experience I know all the things I do wrong yeah. <laughs> so that I, one I can I can speak to that I, I can just put the toilet seat down, <laughs> I, 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 I down. Can everyone puts down the lid and you're good <laughs> gotta do the motion <laughs> yep <laughs> good job so uh david i wanted to i wanted to play a game with you and this one what? is called would you rather oh no yeah right. okay, you have you to pick one it? we've played this game before and they're like oh i don't know both both um, i know no you got to choose Solid. one that's the point okay. politic so i'm gonna try I'm, I'm gonna try to do better than i did last game so i can yeah. like filter Speaking some of good these ones out. see faster you're so slow at games yeah, and, and pick some really good questions because some of them like, would you rather paint your bathroom or your bedroom? Like that didn't work. Just saying. Uh, would you rather manscape downstairs or <laughs> upscape man down? I don't know. What? That, was, that was dumb. All right, let's, let's move on. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, would you rather be a superhero or the villain? Oh. Hero. 
Yeah, I could totally see you being a hero. What hero would it's you the be? glasses. Hero? <laughs> oh, Clark Kent. <laughs> hero, what would I be? An oh. alien from Krypton. <sighs> Probably no Batman. Although Batman. he's like he's like he's like he's not a he's like like not His a hero. He's like he's an anti- rich. <laughs> he's got all of the gadgets though he's basically so cool. you want money is what i'm hearing <laughs> no but then i can like i can like leap off of buildings and say i'm batman <laughs> <laughs> plus you can leave a double life with like a bunch of money and women and parties right it's true. there you go although i'm not the partier so i mean i'd be more like a, a recluse like later in his life <laughs> well, at least you could have a giant mansion That's yeah great. Okay. With my old creepy butler. Yeah, you always have a best friend, Whitney. How about you? Have a female butler. Oh, female butler. Ooh, even better. Uh, would you rather have a missing finger or an extra toe? Extra toe. Don't be hating. I feel like that would make it hard to get your shoes to fit. Yeah, you just have get to extra white feet. Yeah, you'd white have to go white shoe on one side and not white shoe, or so just wear flip flops. Like buy two different pairs of shoes. That would just look oh, weird, though. Match. I know, but like, if you're married, you're like, 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 where do I put my wedding ring? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Now it's a wedding uh, uh, a, a band, wedding. <laughs> necklace, whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, would you rather have a rewind button in your life or have a fast forward button in your life? Rewind. Rewind. Mm-hmm. Where would you go? Um, to my mission. Your mission? Mm-hmm. Wow. Why Where would you, you go on a mission? Only I you. went to Nebraska, Spanish speaking. Hmm. So you were born in Nebraska and then you went on your mission to Nebraska? Yep. Can't wow. get away. Yeah. Can't. <laughs> so what, what happened back on your mission that you would go back to? Um, I don't know. Well, like, right. So the beginning of my mission was very, very tough. I had a couple of companions who should have been sent home. Um, it was it was extremely difficult. Um, I didn't. No, it was it was just. I they won't get into it. It was bad. <laughs> Were they going they to following? Me? What's that? Well, you want to get into it, but I keep on. I, I want to keep on asking <laughs> questions. <laughs> it was bad. They should have been sent home, and I should have said something, and didn't. I finally told my mission president about that after um, I got home and he basically said, I'm so sorry, but you know, those things happened and obviously we can't do anything about it now. And I ended up writing a letter to my trainer um, and it was really cathartic actually. It was really freeing for me. You wrote the letter after your mission? After, yeah. Okay. Wow. Because my, my, my parents knew that something was wrong. They didn't know what it was. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I didn't communicate. That was one of my, that's one of the things that I have had to learn is how to communicate. Dude, I um, really want to know what it was. I mean, if it affected <laughs> you for like two years and then you wrote a letter about it, I mean, were these guys just like hazing you and like walking around naked and kind of doing the whole, you know, Johnson swing along? I mean, I, I've been there. Uh, you're, you're on the right path. <laughs> so when I was in, in the MTC, okay, First week I was in the MTC, uh, me, I, I think it was like the first, first or second day, we had everybody that was on the floor, they were going to like China or they were going somewhere else, but everybody on the floor all had t- neckties on and a towel over their, sh- their shoulder and just kind of paraded themselves, had like 16 elders just come through the naked train, just <laughs> right through our room. And we were just like, and they're like, yeah, hey, yeah, welcome, the, welcome, welcome, yeah, nice to meet you. And then, so I think they had just been there for, I mean, they have to be there for what, like six to eight, six to nine weeks or something. I think they were just kind of going crazy by, by the end of oh, it. Oh, yeah, by the end, you're going crazy. crazy. I agree. Oh. See, this is why I'm scared of having sons. <laughs> I feel like boys just do <laughs> dumb stuff just for the sake of being dumb. Like, yeah. they're like, yeah, that sounds stupid, yes. let's do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boys are stupid. They, my, my dad always said, basically boys, their brains shut off at about 12. And it doesn't come back until after they get home from their mission. <laughs> uh, I think, well, 
maybe even a little while after that because <laughs> it might take it a while to some of them it takes a while <laughs> <laughs> so a little birdie told us that uh you might know like this lead singer of imagine dragons i do he was on my yes um dan reynolds great guy um yeah he was he was actually um assistant to the president um you know he's dan's a, he's hilarious um like when we would get together in district meetings or zone meetings or whatever like he was just he was the life of the party he was always cracking jokes he was always doing practical jokes i mean his practical jokes were phenomenal <laughs> um there just just a great guy i mean he had us i mean he he obviously comes from a different background i mean he grew up in in um las vegas if i remember right um so not a typical les family i mean he had obviously had all of those values and things he had a strong testimony um and uh he actually came to our we haven't had a mission reunion in like 10 years um and so he was there and it was just so good to see him and hug him and like talk so you know because he's just he's real he's I just a great guy, guy. Is. i don't even know what this song what i just I you don't just, know who the Imagine Dragons are. Who they are? Oh, okay. if you Listen heard any to of like their songs, radioactive. Okay, like, radioactive. Yeah, or mm -hmm. like right now, because I kind of am really repetitive on the songs I listen to, and right now I'm listening to Imagine Dragons, um, "Born to Be Yours." It's really oh, yes. good. One. Yeah. So that's kind of on repeat on my my huh. playlist right I'll now. I'll have to check them out. I'll look them them up, and you'll know so many of their songs. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, the 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 bands. I, I I know songs, but that's about it. Yeah. I don't know the artists. Yeah, no, great guy. Um, and you know, it's it's sad to see what happened. I mean, obviously, he took a different path um, after the mission. He struggled with a lot of things. Got kicked out of BYU. Um, it's but he he's still Dan, yeah, but and he still has just the biggest heart and loves everybody that's that's the thing about dan is he loves absolutely everybody doesn't matter if you're gay if you're straight if you're black if you're white he loves everybody right. and that's that's the amazing thing about dan that's i know great. i saw an interview with him i don't know maybe it was on ellen something and i don't remember all the details but i remember like throughout the interview a lot of things that i was thinking and i was like oh like that i thought that's kind of sad that that's kind of the choices that you made but at the same time like same thing it was just like he, I mean, he was advocating for like gay marriage and like all these things mm -hmm. that I was like, you really are a good, a good person. He is. And Absolutely. I can see a lot of the issues that he had issues with that a lot of people do with the church. Mm -hmm. yep. Is he not, not, uh, not no. active? Is that, no. is that what I'm getting now? No, he's not. Okay. Gotcha. You know what? We're all on a journey, right? Mm -hmm. So no. he's still got the rest of his journey to go. I think Absolutely. being a good person is much more important than being a good Mormon. I, you know what? Cause there's some good Mormons that aren't very good people. Yeah. Right. I have to believe, I always go back to the part in the book of Mormon where the Lord's kind of like, you know, the Lamanites are better off than you because they love their kids. They love their children. They're loving and kind to each other where y'all are just like a hot mess. So right. just because someone doesn't live and follow the gospel doesn't mean they don't, aren't better off actually than some of us who try and are, judgmental or whatever the case yeah is. if we're just like the sunday mormons that we show up and we're perfect on sunday yeah. weekend warriors yeah yep yeah all right so all right here's one for you oh we're going back okay yeah we, oh, pff, no. i forgot we're playing one. a game make it a good one <laughs> uh would you rather find true love or would you rather find 10 million dollars oh true love it's worth two million dollars. I would rather I would rather be happy and poor than rich and unhappy. <laughs> yeah, but if you're rich, then you could buy true love. Okay, no. ladies. Okay, ladies. He's a catch. Get him. <laughs> uh, this is fun. Uh, would you rather fly or read minds? Ooh, I don't want to know what people are thinking. So flying. <laughs> oh yeah, flying all the way on that one. Sure. I mean, if if you can read people's minds, you're reading all of their thoughts all of the time. It's like, I don't want to know. Yeah. Don't <laughs> want to know all that. It would be fun for like a minute. Yeah. But yeah. then and I walk in the room like, and I no. see all these ladies looking at me. I'm like, oh, hey, I am a person. 
<laughs> yeah, that's I am a true. person. Don't just look at me at meat like a meat. I'm a Actually, real person. You're like, you're like, really? <laughs> that's what you think of me? Okay, we're done. <laughs> like, yeah, well, your forehead isn't that much better. <laughs> Okay, I've got a would you rather that I looked up and it's a really gross one. So I want to see what he thinks. Okay, <laughs> would you? Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know which one I would choose on this. Would you rather wear someone else's dirty underwear or use their toothbrush? Oh. All right. Take I'm a brown streak. <laughs> you, oh, no. <laughs> you'd go with the dirty underwear? <laughs> it would worn yes. all day on the construction site <laughs> in nice, Arizona. Dirty and stinky. And the toothbrush is probably not even been rinsed. It's like a hot mess too. Nasty. Oh yeah, underwear. Okay, which one? Oh, you're going underwear. Mm -hmm. How about you, Whitney? Amy, Amy Jo is going uh, neither. She's gonna go full command. No, that's the thing about what you rather. You gotta pick a side. You gotta pick one. You, yeah, oh, the yeah. line has been drawn in the sand. <laughs> yep, you gotta pick one. All right, Whitney. Are you gonna wear Celeste brown streaks? <laughs> I mean, are they like just stained, but they've been washed? They are dirty. So that like, means, no, they're dirty. They're not dirty. dirty. They are dirty. Fresh brown crust. Well, why <laughs> is it my underwear that's got the brown crust? What? <laughs> this is Nick's underwear. <laughs> just roll with it. It's someone else's dirty underwear? It's not even my yeah. own dirty underwear? No. Someone else's toothbrush and what someone else's underwear. One? Ooh, I don't know if I can do <clears throat> I don't know if I can do toothbrush. Can I, well, can I clean the toothbrush? <laughs> no. You either got to put them on Use or stick it in out. Can, can I phone a friend? <laughs> when I was married, my ex once used my toothbrush, like right Ew. in front of me. And I was like, Ew. Oh God, right now? who are you? It's not even you right with a spouse. Way. It's just very <laughs> You it's do it away. <laughs> okay. Like if we're just going even going to the bathroom in front of them, let alone using their toothbrush. Like, yeah. We've got, we've got a lot of okay. different. I guess toothbrush. I guess toothbrush. I would probably I'm, go I've toothbrush myself. Before. I've got I am, slobber in my mouth. I've never had somebody's I am all rubbed on my here. body. With, with, the, with the place that my mouth has been, uh, toothbrush, it'll be fine. No, I'm all about the underwear. Ugh. Nothing in my mouth like that. Ugh. Yeah. Nobody's dirty toothbrush. Okay, <laughs> back to you, Nick. I just saw that on there and I'd like, that's a good one. Right, right. That's gross. Make me squirm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, I know you're an introvert, so my guess is I already know the answer to this one. Uh, but let's see. Uh, would you rather be a nobody in a perfect world, or would you rather be a very important person in a very bad world? That's tough. Um, I mean, I'm already a nobody anyway. So if I could make a difference, then I would have to say be something important in a bad world. Yeah, I like it. Yep. I agree. So disagree. A couple you, of you'd those. rather just be in a perfect world. Yeah, I'd rather the world just be perfect. Then it's perfect for everybody, and I don't need any glory. Everybody just is <laughs> perfect for everyone. Yeah, I guess I can see. I mean, the communists already tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's talk about your, your dating for, uh, go back to that. Cause that's kind of our, our main focus on this. Uh, you are, you're open currently. Uh, you're mm -hmm. only on mutual. Are you not on any other dating apps? No, I, I mean, I'm cheap, so I don't want to pay for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I did. I'm, I'm actually not even on mutual anymore. I just do Marco Polo and Facebook and word of mouth. Oh, so people can't even find you on, on the, on the dating app anymore. Yeah. I mean, I technically am on Facebook dating app, but I don't need, like, I didn't even know that was a thing. I just so, knew about that too. Oh, is I, it? I, oh, okay. I don't, I don't even swipe on it. Like if somebody swipes up on me, I'm like, no. <laughs> I do like that that one tells you who likes you yes. and it shows you mutual friends. Cause sometimes I'll see our mutual friends and I'm like, if you're friends with that person, I don't know if you're my type. So are you saying yeah. it's an actual app? See, I've heard about no. it. I don't know anything in, about in it. In the Facebook app, there's like a heart at the bottom. If you click on mm -hmm. that, then there's Facebook dating. Oh, so you, you got your Facebook. Oh. And okay. Then yeah. Right next to my notifications is that heart. There's a heart. So if I mm -hmm. click on that heart, then I got like Aww. Ebenezer over here. 
It was like 27. <laughs> I'm totally okay. putting the heart on that one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, so, uh, yeah, you just go through and start, like, putting down a bunch of people. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I actually have a friend who found a boyfriend. They just actually became serious over this weekend. And I was like, from the Facebook cool. app, so, or Facebook, <laughs> whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so I'm technically on that, but I, I just like right now, I'm not so much focused on dating as just like making friends, having new experiences. And if the right person comes along, let's do it, you know, but I'm not like actively like, I don't know, like I kind of got burned out with the whole dating scene um, because I went gung ho for several years and then I started school. I was just like, I need a break. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think I went on three dates this year and I got asked on all three. <laughs> if, wow. if somebody wants to, to reach out and get to know you better, uh, how would they do that? Would they, I mean, are you going to throw your phone number on here and they can add you on Mocha Polo or uh, maybe... friend you on Facebook? I mean, I, if I don't know them on Facebook, I'm not going to accept you know, if they're, yeah, I just, I'm pretty careful who I let on there. Wait, you um, have standards? Yes. <laughs> but what if they're like super hot? Right. It's, it's still a no. So if there's someone in our audience right now or someone that watches this once it's posted, would you want them to like send a message saying, hey, I saw you on the podcast. Yeah. Friend. Like if we have something in common, if we have friends in common, if, you know, I at least have a context then yeah, I'm open to that. But if there's no context and it's just out of the blue and they're like, I love you, I'm like, <laughs> I think you're very sexy. <laughs> love you. So you I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, thank you, Billy. <laughs> so what, what did the first date look like? Um, I love a picnic, first date. Hmm. Um, like my favorite, actually my favorite date was uh, we went, um, actually it was one of the, uh, sisters from my mission she actually contacted me um so we we, we went it was funny because i i knew exactly what she was doing um she was like so we went to the mission reunion had an awesome time i saw her she was cute but um like i didn't i was just talking to everybody else um and so she reached out to me and said hey um because you know how you can just copy um, yeah, pictures from facebook you. like i copied the picture from my the, the main picture from my mission president. She's like, hey, I saw you put on your Facebook. Can you send it to me? Like totally like, you know, trying to be cool about it. And then we started talking. Um, and so uh, we went, I drove up to Salt Lake. She drove up from Provo, um, had a, I made homemade bread, um, had a picnic. Um, it was awesome. And then uh, we went to the, the Tabernacle Choir concert for Pioneer Day what was just phenomenal. It was so good. I mean, I was in tears. <laughs> it was that good. Like it was just powerful. There was absolutely nothing between us. We had nothing in common. There was no chemistry, but it was a phenomenal date. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard that Nick likes homemade bread. So maybe that's a... I have <laughs> kind of date. Nick, <laughs> next time you're, you're in Ogden, I'll make you some bread. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like making homemade bread. It's one of my uh, fun things to do. I yep. substitute the sugar for honey, and then I add in a, a half mm -hmm. cup or a cup of uh, applesauce, and that keeps it moist. Oh yeah, no, uh, that's what I. That's what my mom used to do. I I don't. I don't. Money, honey's expensive, and so I don't do that now. But if I had the option, I would. Awesome. So, uh, crap. There was there was a question I had on that. Oh yeah. Uh, so you kind of didn't hit it off with her. Do you have any other dating horror stories? Oh, yes. Oh, these are um, the best. Love them. <laughs> okay, so I have two. Um, the first one, um, like we met on Mutual. It's like dating apps are weird. They are very impersonal. You really can't get a read on the person until you actually like talk on the phone. Like my, my MO with... Um, this Mutual is why is, we are doing this. Yeah. This, this so, is why we are doing this. Right. 
because like, dating apps are impersonal. And now, if anybody wants to know who David is, they can come here and be like, "This is this guy." <laughs> yep. So, like, I'll chat for a little bit, and then I feel if I like them and have good conversation, that I'll call them on the phone. If that goes well, I'll ask him on the date that first phone call, um, and they just kind of go from there. Um, and anyway, so we were chatting with this girl. Everything was going fine. It was great. Um, went on the date. We went um, ice skating, and I don't know. So I, I basically look like Dick Van Dyke on skates. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. And she's like this semi-pro whatever. <laughs> So I made a complete idiot out of myself, but she kept touching me all night long. You she would not. Do. She you would not leave me alone. Contact person, maybe that's her love language, physical touch. Oh, it definitely was, but she had more in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Start with the elbow, so, go to the butt. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she, it was. It was just all night long, and like first date, it's really for me just getting to know the person and really seeing if there is something there. Um, and so end of the night, um, I walked her to her door. The other thing, so she lived, I didn't know a lot of stuff about her. Like she lived with her parents and her grandparents. She didn't have a job. Um, just really nothing going on. And so end of the night, I'm a gentleman. I walk her to the door, all of the lights are off. And she's like, do you want to come in for some hot chocolate? She yeah. didn't mean hot chocolate. <laughs> Nightcap, huh? Nightcap, yeah. And I, 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 I just kind of blurted it out. I said, "No, I have hot, hot chocolate at home. Thanks." <laughs> oh. I know, you can get a glass like, of water at home. Yeah. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> My own hot chocolate, thanks. <laughs> oh, I felt bad, but I, well, I was especially like going into grandma's house, like that's awkward. Like, so yeah, awkward. don't mind us on the couch eating our, oh. drinking our hot chocolate. You know. Mm, yeah. But like the look in her eye and like what I was like, nope. <laughs> how how was the look in her eye? Was it kind of it was oh, all yeah. like oh let's I mean have that's creepy, happen. but <laughs> <laughs> you know no, you like it was it was it was the long lingering, you know. You kind know of looking down at the lips, <laughs> looking back at the eyes. You, the you know it when you see it. <laughs> bedroom eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she had yeah, definitely bedroom eyes, but I was just like during the headlights maybe just like make out eyes maybe it's not quite bedroom maybe she's like i just really want to kiss this guy and i that's the thing is i i don't kiss on a first date i've only done that with one person um and that's when that i almost got engaged to that was one that i almost got engaged to well maybe that might be something then huh <laughs> but it wasn't like a it wasn't like a make out it was just a nice good kiss did so you kiss on the forehead no <laughs> okay Okay. Lips were definitely touching lips. Yeah, no good. tongue. Hey, I love forehead kisses. That's like true love. Like I actually care about you as a person. That's oh, yeah. a tender. That's a tender thing. It's an emotional yeah. tender right. connection when someone's kissing your forehead. Yep. That would just be awkward on the first date. You're like, okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> Pick on the cheek. That would be a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> you should try to lick the yeah. nose on the first date. Now, ladies love that. <laughs> what? what? You should try to lick a nose on the first oh. date. Ladies love that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what kind of ladies are into Nick, but <laughs> I'm just saying, don't <laughs> judge it till you try it. You're weird, Nick. <laughs> okay, so what's the second one? Oh, the second one. Okay. So if you're familiar with um, the Little House on the Prairie TV show, Nellie Olson. Um, I know Celeste that... is. I I'm old. That was an old <laughs> joke. I know it. I can't help it. <laughs> Can't help when I was born, Nicholas. <laughs> she was she was Nellie Olson to a T. She was stuck up. She was prim, proper. I mean, she could not carry a conversation. Um, I was done with the minute with the date in thirty minutes, and this was a dinner date. Like what? by the by the end of the date, I was talking about the wallpaper because there was just <laughs> like there was nothing to talk about. Like I had run out of options. I'm like. Did you not have like a wingman that was going to call you half hour in the no. date to make sure you could get out? See, I need to learn these things. You I need to do these things. <laughs> okay. I want you to take down my number. And anytime you go on a date, you call me beforehand. <laughs> Put it on my phone, half hour. Somebody, half hour. somebody needs, I, they do, I have people who know where I am. I call my parents at, or text them when I'm home. So like, 
they know where I am and what I'm doing, but you call your parents and you text them to let them know when you're home. Yep. That, do, you that not do, that? do you not do that? I do no. not. I no. don't like my parents my, to know anything about I me. Just, I just called my dad <laughs> today to talk to him about a little pressing issue that I have going on to kind of get a little perspective. And uh, he's all like, oh yeah, no, I'm feeling better. And I was like, feeling better. And he's like, yeah, I got the COVID. And I was like, dude, you're like 69 and you got COVID wow. and you didn't tell me. And it's wow. like been two weeks. He's gotten Jeez. better, but whatever. Yeah. Some of us just get tired. Maybe but apparently like, David has a better relationship with his, with his kids, <laughs> with his parents. I don't I have do. that relationship. Yeah. I'm like, hey, nobody tell my parents that I'm going to be leaving town because I don't want them to call me. <laughs> no one tell my parents that I'm in Florida on my birthday weekend. Hey, okay, my parents rarely <laughs> call me or text me. But when I was in Florida, it was like oh. nonstop the whole weekend. And I'm trying to be nice. Like I try to stay off my phone when I'm on a date or whatever. And I'm like, can y'all just like leave, leave me alone? You're making me be rude. Well, David's parents live over in South Carolina. So when he's getting home from a date, it's 10 o'clock for him. But it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. His parents are like, dude, stop texting me at 1 a.m. <laughs> They're no, probably they like, it's okay, it. David. <laughs> they appreciate it. Well, that's they good. read it in the morning. <laughs> yeah, they wake up. Okay, David made it home safe. Good to know. Yep. Good to know. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Although, so the, at the end of that second date, so I had a babysitter um and i texted her and said i was on my way home she's like it went that well huh and i was like you have no idea <laughs> and so i i sent a i sent a gif of um indiana jones when he's like hanging on for dear life on the tank <laughs> like this is how it went <laughs> hey you can always use babysitters as excuses too. you pretend you get a text that you're is, like yeah. oh my gosh i need to call my babysitter give me a second and then you can get out that way i have done that once and i felt bad <laughs> You know what I've learned? You just can't feel bad. Yeah. You know what? I would feel bad like all the time, but I've just come to realize some people are just not for me. You know, that's that how it is. You can always just say, hey, listen, I need to go to the bathroom and you kind of take all your stuff and oh, you go okay. to the bathroom. That's and then, a little bad. Uh, <laughs> that I, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. You go to the so, side door and then keep walking through the car. That's yes, I good. know you picked her up, but you know, she can be an adult, get an Uber <laughs> home. That's fine. Ubers. <laughs> no Poor that would girl. be horrible let's not do oh that my here. goodness no first dates i do separate cars always oh yeah good yeah that's good. always a good yeah meet at a public place you leave in separate vehicles what's what is the uh what's the quickest that you've ever ended a date that one it was 30 minutes oh nice you did end it at 30 minutes mm -hmm. okay that's awesome like we had like I didn't basic, I didn't eat my dinner. Like I had maybe a few bites. <laughs> I love that. But I was like, um, like I just, 20 minutes I, in, I was like, I was like watching the paint, you know, dry. And I was like, can we get our check, please? <laughs> I have lunch dates for that reason. Like for a first yeah. date. Cause then it's like, you have one hour, a little bit less with drive time and then like good or bad, you don't have to make up an excuse. You're like, I got to go back to work. Right. And so then it's like short, but long enough, like you can get to know each other, but short enough that you can be like, nah, I don't like them. And then if like you like them, awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and they can't be like, do you want to come back to my place? No, I got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a job. Thank you. I have I'm a life. Adult. Right. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for coming out. It's been yeah, fun getting welcome. to know you tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. No, thank uh, you so, so much. I, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but yeah, love it. That's you did awesome. great. <laughs> it was great getting to know you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. So yeah, anybody that's interested in getting to know David after watching this uh, video, you can always uh, find him on uh, Facebook or go to any one of the LDS uh, groups and uh, try to find them there. Remember that stalking is not something that we promote nor condone, but we understand it happens. But also remember, gifts are his life. Whitney. Life. That's right. <laughs> hey, I, I honestly view my stalking skills as like a pro for me. And I was just about to say, skills. I was gonna say, but if you do wanna stalk him, go to Whitney to get some tips. I can help. <laughs> Whitney won't even accept my friend request. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, sorry, I think I have like 
over <laughs> 300. And some people they'll be like, I sent you a friend request. I'm like, no, you never did. And then I'll go, I'm like, oh, you did. Sorry. Wait, there bad. has to be a certain amount of like, cause there's, you know, it's just what it is. You have to have interaction online. And well, yeah, I have so many just from like random strangers that yeah. like, I don't even know who they are. I don't know how they would know me or how they found me. Right. And like, like I share about my kids. I feel like Facebook is yeah. Like I have it a is. public Instagram page. I have a public TikTok. Like go follow my public pages, but like Facebook is just more personal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't just want random people on there, you know? Right. So until I really, there, I mean, I have a friend, good friend that he sent me a message and I ignored it for probably six months yeah. before I finally, like, we were kind of talking in a group. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to PM him, him about this because instead of keep going in the group and I was like, oh, he already sent me a message six months ago. <laughs> yeah. So eventually it'll get there. Nice. Yeah. And that's happened, you know, like you just start talking, interacting. And they're like, oh, I guess there is a friend request from like two months ago. I guess I'll accept it now because yeah. I know him now. Yeah. I know. Like Shasta said, she didn't accept, I didn't accept hers. I didn't even know. Like I totally missed it. And I was like, you never said it. She's like, yeah, I did. I was like, oh. Yeah, like you, you Idahoans have to stay together. Like what the heck? I know. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody again for coming out tonight. Yep.